Hi everyone, good morning or good afternoon and welcome to this webinar. Thank you for being here with us today. I'm Lara Caron and I'm part of Lauma's sales department and today I will be the moderator of this event. So I yield the floor to my colleague Stefano Corradi who will be the speaker of this presentation. Hello and welcome to everyone again. I'm Stefano Corradi and I'm part of the Lauma Sales Department too. And today I will be your speaker. Uh, as you know, today we are going to talk about uh, guidelines for correct installation of a waking system. So we will talk about uh, local installation, uh, wired connection, and mounting accessory, electronics, and so on. This presentation is all about general rules. So uh, these uh, tips and suggestions will be uh, correct also for any kind of uh, load cell or waiting system of any other manufacturer. Uh, of course, <laughs> we, it, it will be nice and we will be glad if you will use our products in your waiting system. Uh, we can say that Laumas, uh, after about 40 years uh, in the waiting sector, um, we did thousands of technical assistance to our customers and this has allowed us to uh, have a, a background of uh, experience and knowledge about that. It, this knowledge uh, allowed us to understand that uh, more or less the, 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 the main common, the common errors and uh, uh, problems that you can find in a waiting system are more or less always the same. So we decided to identify these uh, errors or problems and uh, to uh, store them and make some short videos that you are going to see today and make uh, this video uh, will be, are available on our website and you can uh, show it watch it uh, when you when you want uh, so uh, now uh, we we are going to see this video and we, i can show you where you can find these videos uh, you we can go on our website it is laumas.com and you just need to Click on assistance and you will see webinar and tutorial. After clicking there, you can just scroll down and you will find video tutorial. This is the section where all our video uh, about, uh, as I saw before, loads and installation and many, many other things like also uh, multi channel transmitter or uh, equalization, many, many things about our products, you can find them here. Today we are going to see the video from number one to number eight, and uh, uh, I'm not going to watch directly from our website, but I already downloaded them on, a, on my PC. So I think that uh, for now we can go and see the first video. Guidelines for the implementation of weighing systems. Load cells installation, planarity and indeformability of the support plates, compliance with mounting surface and load direction, installation of single point load cells. Check that the load cells support plates are coplanar and as a rule planar. Use suitable mounting kits to compensate for any misalignment of the support plates. The support plates must be sufficiently rigid and non-deformable. For shear beam, bending beam and single point load cells, it is necessary to comply with the mounting surface stated on the data sheet. Pay attention to the load direction stated on the data sheet or on the load cell body. This must be oriented towards the same direction of the applied force. For safety reasons, it is recommended to use the load cells at a maximum of 70 to 80% of their nominal capacity. 
In case of weighing of structures with four supports, consider that the load will not be uniformly distributed and that 85 to 90% of the applied load will be distributed on just three supports. Single point load cells are able to weigh correctly within an area stated on the data sheet. For example, using a load cell guaranteed for an area of 400 to 400 millimeters, we are certain that by applying a weight force at any point of a structure of such dimensions, the detection will be correct. By installing a structure with a larger size than that stated on the data sheet, or by applying an object that protrudes from the structure, it is possible to damage the single point load cell and, in any case, obtain an incorrect weight value. Okay, so we just saw our first video that it was about planarity and deformability of the support plates. Um, we saw that we had to follow some key rules when we make a weighting system. The first rule is that the support plates must be planar and the weighting force of you know, our weight must be uh, on, in, in axe with the load cell. If we won't have this force applied in the, in the correct axe of the load cell, we will add errors in our weighting. Um, often uh, we talk about hold and coarse frames, so it's not easy to have uh, coplanar planes or, um, for example, uh, good uh, frame and strong frame. Uh, in these cases, it will be uh, useful and it will help uh, to adjust misalignments or uh, any other uh, problems to use uh, mounting kits that are suitable for uh, adjusting any misalignments. The second rule is that the support plates must be rigid and not deformable because if the support plates under the load cell or over the load cell we will place our weight uh, will bend, we will have some, uh, uh, of course, uh, weighing error and uh, um, the, the, the weight that we will get will, won't be repeatable. We saw also that uh, when we talk about Share beam, bending beam, or center load cell, um, we must respect the mounting surface uh, of the load cell that are stated in their data sheet. Uh, if we won't respect this uh, uh, surface, um, the, the, the load cell won't bend correctly, so we will have again a wrong uh, weight value. Another uh, key point is to comply with the load direction that, uh, as we saw in the video, um, must be oriented toward the same direction of the applied force. So what I mean that normally on the load cell body, we have an arrow that uh, tells you which is the direction of the force to be applied. So if we make the, the, the installation of the load cell we put it in the wrong way, uh, in case of a uh, weighing system with just one load cell, it will be easy to understand it because when we put a weight on it, we will get a weight value with a minus in front of it. While it will be more difficult to find it if we have a weighing system with more than one load cell, for example, three or four load cells or six or more. Because in this case, if we have one or more than one load cell that is uh, installed in the wrong direction, we will have the weight value that can maybe sometimes can go up or go down depending where we put the weight on the weighting system. In this case, um, it will be really, uh, you, you can get mad to understand which is the problem. So remember to check always the load and the force direction. Another uh, suggestion that we will want to, to tell you is to oversize the load cell capacity. So what I mean is that if we have um, to weight, <clears throat> for example, 1,000 ton, uh, we don't have to use a uh, full load cell for, for example, of 250 kilogram each. Uh, what we suggest is to use about the 70 or the 80 percent of the nominal capacity of the load cell that we install. So uh, 
just keep this um, margin, safe margin of about 30-20% in case of dynamic load or uh, possible overloading. Uh, for a um, weighing system with full support, for example, um, another tip uh, is to keep in mind that the weight won't be distributed um, in the same, uh, in the same may, uh, way on all over the load cell. So probably uh, you will have the 85 or 90 percent of this load distributed on just three supports. So when we have to choose the capacity of each load cell, we have to keep in mind this, and we suggest you, you to, for example, when you have a system with four load cells, to have the maximum weight uh, that you have to support that can be supported by just three load cells. So, for example, what I mean is that if we have to uh, weigh 3,000 kilograms, don't use uh, the, the load cell really, really uh, with the same capacity, but use at least four loads of 1,000 kilograms each. So the 3,000 kilograms will be supported by the three loads. Now, um, the other tips, it was about the uh, off-center load cells. The off-center loads are, are called like that because, uh, or single point, because are used mainly for um, system with just one load cell. The most important things with this kind of load cell is to comply with the loading area of the load cell that is stated on the data sheet. So as we saw, we have no central load cell with, a, for example, an area of 400 millimeter per 400 millimeters. We have to put all our uh, weight inside that area. If we go outside this area, we will have errors and also we risk to damage the, uh, the load. Now we can uh, see the, the second video that is uh, about the load cell installation but more dedicated to mounting kits. Mechanical constraints, frictions, piping. The more a weighed structure is free from friction, the more a weighing system is precise. When piping are present, make sure that the pipe to be anchored to the weighed structure is close and aligned with the nozzle to which it will be clamped. Mechanical constraints can be limited by using flexible hoses and flexible or free couplings with rubber protection, for example, bellows type. Alternatively, place the first anchoring bracket in the horizontal section as far as possible from the weighed structure, at least 40 times the diameter of the pipe. To verify the correct mechanical installation of the weighing system, proceed as follows. Carry out the zeroing of the weight indicator. Apply a force to the system. Remove it. The indicator has to return perfectly to zero. In case of weighing systems with several load cells, repeat this operation in correspondence with each load cell. When the system is loaded, the weight values are similar on each load cell. When the system is unloaded, the weight value is zero. Okay, this is another uh, very important aspect. Uh, really often our customer ask us, uh, which is the load cell accuracy or which is the accuracy of the scale? Actually, uh, from our point of view, uh, it is very difficult to answer to these questions because the combined error and the accuracy class stated on the data sheet of each load cells uh, refer to values obtained in a, a with a testing machine in a, let's say, a perfect environment that is completely different from the real environment. So, as we saw in this video, the errors come from friction, vibration, and piping, etc. And who may call this? It's, it's you or, or the customer. So, it's not Lauma that make this, so it's, it's, it will be hard for us. So, all what we can do is to suggest you some <clears throat> other tips. So, the lower are the friction, the, the more precise will be your weighing system. So, you have to uh, be, 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 be careful to keep your system uh, standalone and to not have any friction about anything that is not weighted. 
uh, when, when there are pipings, for example, in uh, silos that are connected by piping with other silos or other uh, machine, it's, uh, uh, you have to be careful to avoid tension uh, to, due to wrong connection between pipings. And <clears throat> in order to have uh, uh, less uh, constraint, mechanical constraints, uh, um, we suggest to use uh, flexible hoses and flexible couplings between the piping and the uh, wagging system. Where it's not possible to use these flexible hoses, um, we suggest that the clamping must be in a distance greater than the 40 times the diameter of the pipe. Also, <clears throat> after uh, doing the uh, system installation and the uh, theoretical calibration, uh, we must reset the tear of our uh, scale, so we have to make it zero. Then, um, after doing that, we have to apply a sample weight on the scale, verify that the weight is correct, and then remove the weight and check the, the scale come to zero again. When we have scales with more than one load cell, for example with four load cells, we have to repeat this operation many times of uh, every time that we uh, on each load cell. So for four times it will have four load cells. This is uh, used to check the repeatability, repeatability of the uh, uh, weighing system. And every time the scales must come to zero. <laughs> Now we can see the, our third video that is uh, about load cell connection. Load cells connected in parallel. To connect several load cells in parallel, use a waterproof junction box with a suitable terminal board or a multi-channel transmitter in a box. The incoming and outgoing cables from the box or from the multi-channel transmitter require the installation of cable glands. The extension cables used for connection must be shielded. It is recommended to use a six-wire cable with reference sense management, able to compensate for the voltage drop due to the distance between the devices. Ideally, it must be inserted alone into the wireway and laid as far as possible from the power cables. When using four conductor connection cables, consider a minimum section of one square millimeter and preferably not exceed 300 meters in length. Here again. So this video was about, as I told you, load cell connection uh, in parallel. When you have to connect more than <clears throat> one load cell, so when connect to uh, the load cell in parallel, uh, we have to use junction boxes with cable length with a, a suitable terminal board, with equalization, if needed or not. Or we can use also weight transmitter inside a box. When uh, um, we have to use weighted transmitter, uh, we recommend to use, for example, our multi-channel transmitter that will grant you some uh, um, advantages in respect of standard junction boxes, because you will have the digital equalization, you will have the repartition of the weight on each load cell, and also, um, that is very important and useful, uh, you will have the um, load cell diagnostic, so we, you will understand immediately which is the load cell that has a problem or that is broken. As you know, um, we have load cell with six wire or four wires. Um, when you have to connect a junction box or a weight, and a weight transmitter or, or weight indicator, uh, we, we recommend you also always to use a six wire shielded cable that is uh, able to compensate any voltage drops due to the distances um, between the load cell and the indicator or the transmitter. When this is not possible and uh, we have load cell with four wire, uh, we, we suggest to use a minimal section of the wire of uh, one millimeter, millimeter square and preferably the, to not exceed the 300 meter uh, length of this cable. What, while with a six wire cable, we won't have this problem and this limitation. Uh, another uh, thing that is ideally uh, better to do is to uh, insert this cable in, alone in the, in the wireway and uh, let it as far as possible from power cable, but we know that is not always possible. So 
at least uh, it's better to keep them uh, as far as possible or uh, not together, close together with a, a power cable. Now uh, we are going our fourth video about welding. Welding. It is recommended to avoid welding while the load cells are installed. If this cannot be avoided, place the welder ground clamp close to the required welding point to prevent sending current through the load cell body. Okay, so we sorted out to see this video. It was about welding. Um, as uh, I told you before, the welding is one of the um, main things that we are going to do when we install load cell and mounting kits. Um, first of all, the load cell must not be subject subjected to electrical discharges because otherwise the, they will be damaged. And also, it, it is recommended to avoid the welding while the load cells are installed. Um, it's better to do it before to install the load cell. For example, with our uh, compression load cell um, and their mounting case, it's possible to do that because you can insert the load cell, the compression load cell, after doing the uh, mounting accessory installation. If this can be avoided, uh, we, we recommend uh, to place the welder ground clamp closer than possible to the, the, the welding point. This is to prevent to send the current through the load cell body. Okay, let's try to see the video number five that it's about constraints against the lateral forces, forces and the, the tilt. Constraints, positioning, wind, shocks, vibrations, horizontal forces, tilting. Several mounting kits are available. Their purpose is to obtain a correct installation of the load cell and the maximum reliability and precision compatibility with the mechanical, electrical, and pneumatic connections on the structure to be weighed. In weighing systems with multiple load cells, it is recommended to place constraints to act against any lateral forces. The system designer will have to evaluate whether the standard mounting kits are sufficient for this purpose or whether to provide further measures according to shocks and vibrations, wind pressure, seismic classification of the installation area, strength of the support plates. Making constraints able to act against the horizontal forces allows the load cells to work correctly, avoiding potentially damaging stresses. The realization of anti-tilt constraint is appropriate in weighing systems such as silos, tanks, or structures placed outdoors and potentially subjected to wind pressure, earthquakes, accidental impacts with operating vehicles such as trucks, forklifts, and other similar situations. We saw the video. Uh about the constraints against lateral forces and anti-tilt. Um, as Laumas, besides to load cell and electronics, uh, we make also a wide range of mounting kits that are suitable for uh, any need or weighing system. Uh, many of our mounting kits, uh, mounting accessories, uh, already have constraints uh, against lateral forces in, uh, in, in their construction, but, but the main purpose of uh, mounting kits is to obtain a correct installation <clears throat> of the load cell and the, 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 the maximum reliability and, pre and precision uh, compatibly uh, with, with, with this uh, mechanical, electrical and pneumatic connection present in the weighing system. Uh, in in weighing system uh, with multiple uh, load cells, uh, we recommend to place constraints to act against lateral forces if uh, uh, also if not present in the directly in uh, in the mounting kit, and then the the system designer uh, we have to will have to evaluate if the standard mounting kits are adequate or are sufficient for the system, uh, and if not, the, he will have to uh, provide a further measurement to, um, to 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 work against the the. A probable shocks or vibration, or for example, in, uh, in with the big silos, uh, 
uh, that these are installed outside in the that can have wind pressure or maybe seismic classification uh, and 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 so on. In, to make uh, constraints uh, able to act against uh, horizontal forces, and it's also uh, a, could be also a weakness because. Um, the more you put um, uh, constraints or, 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 or mechanical stuff ag uh, around this uh, weighting system, the more you could have, as we saw before, um, you can have friction or uh, other uh, piping that can have uh, give you problems in the weighting system. So we have to um, be careful to put and install the, the correct uh, constraints and in the, the, to, to, to install them in the correct way. So, for example, when we use uh, treated bars to, um, to, to, uh, uh, to be able to um, constrain lateral forces, we have to be sure to keep the uh, minimal distances between the treated bar and the weighting system to give him the possibility to move and weight in the correct way. Now we will see our new video that is about the, the weighing of silos, tanks and uh, structure with legs. Silos weighing structures with legs. If the weighing system is applied to structures with legs or silos, it is always necessary to check that the supports are connected to each other, if not connect them properly. Okay, and um, this is very simple. So when you have uh, silos, tanks, or structure with legs, <clears throat> maybe tall uh, structure, uh, it's always necessary to um, link, to connect the, the legs uh, one each other. This because if these legs will bend uh, due to the weight, uh, we will have weighting errors, and also it could be uh, dangerous because maybe uh, the, 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 the structure could fall down. So let's see to our new video. Electrostatic charges, grounding of the weighed structure. Electrostatic charges are potentially capable of damaging the load cells. For this reason, it is recommended to connect by a copper wire of adequate cross section the upper support plate of each load cell with the relative lower plate. Then connect all the lower plates together to the same grounding system. In this way, the electrostatic charges are discharged to the ground without crossing and without damaging the load cells. Making a proper grounding system prevents damage to the load cells and to the devices connected to them. It is strictly forbidden to ensure grounding system continuity by using metal parts of the weighed structure. We saw the, the video about grounding of the weighing structure. Um, as we saw before, uh, when we saw the video about the welding, the uh, electrostatic charge discharges uh, are, can damage the load cells. So uh, we have to make a very good uh, grounding system on a, for, for our weighing system. Uh, the, 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 so, if we make a good grounding, we will avoid that the discharge, this discharge will pass through our load cell. Uh, it's always recommended to connect uh, a copper wire between the upper plate and the lower plate of each load cell, and then connect all the lower plates together in the same grounding system. This will be the perfect grounding system. Because, as told before, making a, a, a proper grounding system will prevent to damage the load cell. <clears throat> and the device is also connected to them, because the, these discharges can be also discharged not only in the load cell, but also in the electronics. And it is as written here in, the, in, the, in this chart, it is strictly forbidden to assure the grounding system continuity by using a metal part of the weighing structure. So do not use a leg or something else that cross the load cell and goes down in the ground. Now we are at the last video 
but not the, the, the less important. This video will be uh, about the instruction for the connection of uh, our the weight indicator and the weight transmitter. Guidelines for the correct installation of electronic devices, weight indicators, and weight transmitters. The load cell cable must be autonomous and not pass through the wireway with other cables. It is recommended to connect it directly to the weight indicator or transmitter without interruptions and without terminal boards. It is recommended not to install electronic devices in an electrical panel containing inverters. However, if this cannot be avoided, install special filters and insert separation plates between the inverters. In case of power supply 230 VAC, a 380 to 230 VAC transformer must be used. Do not use a 380 VAC phase and the neutral one. The person in charge of the electrical panel must prepare and install all the electrical protections needed to ensure the safety of the plant. It is recommended to always keep the devices powered in order to avoid condensation. Here, this was the last video with the instruction for the correct installation of a weight indicator or transmitter. <clears throat> As we saw also in the previous video, it's um, ideally correct to um, put the uh, load cell cable uh, isolated in a, so in, in, a wire, in a separate wire way or as far as possible from a power cable. And also, this cable must be connected directly to the weight indicator without interruption or uh, terminal boards. Uh, when we have uh, inside our panel, um, it's better and also it's recommended to install uh, the uh, electronics, so the transmitter, the weight transmitter, or the weight indicator. Uh, not together with inverters. If this is not possible, because we have also inverters in the same panel, it's uh, um, uh, highly recommended to uh, install these special filters or uh, separation plates between the inverters and the electronics, so the weight transmitter or the weight indicator. When we have a power supply of 380 VAC uh, and a device with 230 VAC, um, we have to use a, a transformer uh, between the uh, power supply and the indicator or electronic. Never, never use the phase and the neutral of the 380 VAC. Uh, the person that is in charge of the electronic panel uh, must prepare and install all the electrical protection uh, needed to have a, uh, the, the, the correct and the good safety uh, situation in this panel. Also, the last tips is to keep always the uh, transmitter or the uh, indicator um, powered to prevent any uh, condensation. Um, okay, this was the, the end of our presentation. So uh, here you have the, the last chart with the, all the technical that I can give the floor to my colleagues, uh, Lara. Okay, so we already have some questions. The first one is 300 meters, isn't that too much? For outdoor weighing, the temperature may vary from minus 20 to plus 30 degrees or more. I guess he's referring to the piping. I think it's not about the, the wirings. The wires. Wiring. Okay, okay. Mm, let's think that we um, talk about 300 meters uh, as maximum length when you have a four wire cable. So with a four wire cable, it's too much. While with a six wire cables, that where you have the power supply, you have the signal and also the reference, uh, you won't have problem with, uh, you won't have drops of the millivolt volts. Uh, of course, uh, if there is the possibility, it's better to keep the indicator or transmitter closest as possible to the load cell. Uh, for example, in this, for, for these situations, we have the, transmitter that can be installed inside a junction box, inside an ABS box, 
near to the loader and then goes away with a safe signal, for example, uh, RS-485 or any kind of field bus or protocol. Okay, then we have our second question. Uh, can we download those videos? Yes, of course. As uh, my colleague Lara told you at the beginning, uh, this uh, uh, webinar is uh, recorded, so it will be available on our website, as you see also here in, in, the, in the section webinar and tutorials, within a few weeks. Uh, while all the videos that we saw today are already available on our website and you can download them. And I think that these videos are very, really, really useful for, for, for you and for your customer because it will be easier to explain to your customer how to make the installation, how to make a good waiting, waiting system. And it, will, it, it is also faster than explain them. Just you can tell them, okay, let's go here and watch this video at maybe one minute and 30 seconds. Okay, then another question. Uh, perhaps the full presentation will be made available later on the Laumas website. I guess my colleague just answered uh, to this question. Uh, another question. If we have load cells with four wires cable, can we make them longer? For example, if we have 10 meter cable, can we uh, solve another uh, five meters to it? Can we weld another <laughs> five meters to it? Uh, okay, um, as we talked about before, um, it's always better to avoid this uh, welding, this terminal board, or uh, especially for four wide, uh, four wide cables load cells. Um, so my suggestion is to, to, to put a transmitter or a junction box <clears throat> near the, the, the load cells and then uh, give go away with a, with a six wire cable or with a, a protected signal like a serial signal. Uh, if it is not possible, because sometimes it's not possible as we saw before, we may, because maybe we have a whole frame or a big frame, uh, yeah, you, you, you can do it, but you have to do it very, very carefully and you have to good, make a very good welding uh, because we are talking about millivolts, so the, the, the signal is very low and can be disturbed for, 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 from many things. So, if possible, it's better to avoid it. Okay. Then, why use a three, uh, 380 to 230 VAC transformer and not one line and zero? This is uh, <clears throat> because... Uh, for any 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 problem of um, uh, over voltage or with, with a transformer, you will uh, you will save your transmitter, you will save your indicator. While if you keep if you take the the one phase and the neutral, uh, you won't have this safety, and also you will have your risk to damage the indicator. Another question. Which load cell accessories may I use to weigh mixers? To weigh mixer. Okay. <clears throat> First of all, we have to understand and to see which is your uh, gross weight. Uh, because um, for, for, for uh, smaller mixer, we can use a uh, sharpened load cell, for example, or, or bending bin load cell with a, with a proper with a, the, the appropriate uh, mounting kits that could, could be, for example, uh, our mounting kits with uh, anti-vibration uh, accessories. While for bigger uh, mixers, <clears throat> we suggest to use compression load cell with the mounting kits, uh, for example, the V10,000, uh, where you have the uh, anti-tilt uh, constraints and also the... Um, lateral forces constraint that will be um, absorbed by the mounting kits V10,000 and not by the compression loads. Okay, and we have a similar question. As for silos, tanks, etc., when should we use compression load cells and when share beam and double share beam load cells? Okay, uh, this is, uh, first of all, we have to, to see, as I told before, the capacity, the total capacity. From my point of view, if I, I will have, I should have, um, I, 
I have to build a, a tank or a silo, I would always use the compression loads because they are um, easier to install it because when uh, I can install the mounting kits with 10,000 or with 15,000 or bigger, then install the structure over it, the tank, the silo, and then after doing all the weldings and everything, I can insert the load cell, move the nuts, and then we have the system done. Why? If we have the, at the same time also, if I have to do a reparation, I just need to uh, close the nuts, so uh, lift up the structure, remove the load cell, and replace it. While if uh, I use sharp beam or bending beam load cell, I have to install, it, I install them immediately and then put the structure up on the load cell and everything is connected together. Uh, if I have any problem, I need to use, for example, a crane to lift up the, the tank or the silo, disinstall the load cell, the mounting case, and then replace and install again and then put uh, down again. So I think that the compression load cell um, Maybe they cost a little bit more than uh, sharpening or bending beam load cell, but a lot of advantages uh, comparing the sharpening or the bending load cell. Okay, then another question also on load cells. Could you please let us know about mounting adjustments of double shear beam load cells for silo weighing? Thank you. Uh, actually, I don't really understand what, what, what they mean, but <clears throat> in our case, our uh, double sharpening load cell is model DTL, for example, the mounting accessories is similar to the compression one, so it's called VCOC DTL, so it has uh, anti-tilt constraints, so you just need to uh, insert the load cell, uh, remove and uh, the, the, the nuts and then it will be uh, landed on the DTL. Okay, then uh, for more than 300 meter cable, shall we use six wire load cell cable uh, for the wire connection? Yes, absolutely yes. Another one on cables, so soldering extra cable to a load cell will change its rated calibration value no, 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 no. You, you will have always to the same uh, uh, capacity. You will have always the same uh, sensitivity that you are, that is stated on the data sheet. So it won't change anything on the calibration. Uh, certain types of load cells are load location insensitive and are ideally suited for mobile or high vibration applications. Um, I would say that we, we, there, there are not specific um, load cell models that are um, more suitable for uh, mobile or high vibration. It's all about the uh, mounting kits that uh, we have to choose the correct mounting kits uh, to let the load cell work properly. Okay. And then, when speaking about mixers, what information about mixer should we get from customer in order to choose the right load cell? Is it density of the product, speed of the mixer, or something else? We're always afraid that after some time, the vibration from mixers will destroy the load cell. How to know when the conditions, vibrations, are not too far for the load cell? Okay, always we have to concentrate that <clears throat> this as we saw in the presentation, this vibration, this uh, uh, bumping must be absorbed by the mounting kits and not by the load cells. So uh, we have to use the correct mounting kits, as I suggested before. In my opinion, with mixers, uh, I would use compression load cells where all this uh, uh, vibration will be absorbed by the 10,000 mounting kits, for example, and if it is not enough because we have, for example, uh, the density of the, the density of the, the product is strong, so we have a, a huge, a big bumping, lateral bumping, uh, we can also add an external um, treated bar or an external constraint to be more stronger. 
So for sure, when you have to make mixes, you have to ask to your customer, uh, the, 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 of course, the gross weight, the dimension of the mixers, because you have to understand if it is uh, the area, it's, it's, it's smaller, but it's very, very tall. So it will be uh, affected by strong uh, vibration or fluctuating, or if it is bigger and um, uh, small, not, not so high. Uh, and also it's a, a useful info to understand which is the problem inside, because if we have sand, for example, we won't have big vibration. But uh, uh, while if we have something that is, uh, for example, um, stones, we will have big vibration and big bumping. So, yeah, this, this information are very, very useful. But remember, uh, this vibration and this strength, must bo they, they, they must not be absorbed by the losses, but by the mounting kits. Okay. And uh, I guess uh, we have the last question. Uh, we will answer to the last question in case you have other questions uh, since we don't have that much time right now I kindly ask you to write an email to the um, to sales at laumas.it which you, you can also see on the last page of the presentation and we will be glad to answer to your questions uh, last question is for silo load cells earthing uh, Better to fix each load cell to a separate electrode or link all legs and use one electrode? Do you mean by the, for, for the grounding? Mm -hmm. um, as you saw in the presentation, it's always better to <clears throat> connect every upper plate with every to each lower plate with a, um, with, with, with a, a, a wire and then connect all the lower plates together with a one uh, wire to, to the ground. And on this, on this same topic, does it have any effect on the load cell reading? Uh, it's actually not, not, not really, but you could have problems. You can have, you can have errors. You can have, uh, if, if it's not, the, the grounding system is not uh, well done. You you you, you risk to damage the loads because the discharge you want will, will pass through the load cells for or maybe through one of each of the, of the loads and you will have one load cell damage. So it's always better, you know. It's just in, in case of four load cells, you have just to use four wires. So copper wires, just four copper wires plus one that link all together and goes in the ground. It's not uh, so expensive, so it's better to uh, make a very good grounding system in order to save money and save the losses. And the very last is uh, mean more than 300 uh, meter cable. Uh, we have six wires, so X plus, X minus, uh, signal plus, signal minus, sensitivity plus and minus. Yep. Uh, due to the long distance voltage will drop, but sen plus sen minus is for external supply to put up the voltage drop. Exactly, exactly. This is the the the, the meaning of and the, uh, the 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 useless the, the useful of the the six wire connection cable. Okay, so we don't have any more questions, so our webinar has finished. Uh, I thank you very much for being here with us today and I hope to see you soon. Thank you very much. Bye. Have a good day.